taking an inventor model into a wind tunnel. Uh, so it's called a particle simulator, usually, and it's called, and the one we're going to use is called Flow Design. Autodesk has a couple of different particle simulating programs. Um, when you install Flow Design, it installs an add-in into Inventor. Um, let's just take a look at that real quick. So if we click on Flow Design here. It will take a minute to start. Okay, so this is kind of how flow design looks. Um, now, the, the, um, the interface is a little bit different. It does allow you to record video. Notice this button right here. However, we're not going to use it. I've noticed that it's a little bit glitchy, especially on the computer that I'm on. Uh, my compu the computer I'm using right now is, uh, is 8 gigs of RAM and an i5 processor. It doesn't seem to produce really great, um, great visuals, and it gets a little bit um, slow in places. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of this add-on. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and export our IPTs uh, so that they'll work best in flow design. So we're going to go uh, now an IPT, a flow design will open an IPT. In fact, it, um, it will, when you install it, it will actually associate itself with IPT files. So you might want to, you might want to go back in and check that the inventor is still associated with IPT files after you install flow design. But um, but the the best format that I've found is an STL. So rather than using an IPT, what we're going to do is we're going to save our IPTs as STL files. So we're going to go ahead and go File Export. And STL is the same thing we'd use for 3D printing usually. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and save the STL. Okay, and we're going to do our other IPT file we're going to be using. Just going to go File Export CAD Format STL again and save. Okay, so once our STLs are saved, we really don't need Inventor open, so we're going to go ahead and close it. Um, now here is a, here is Flow Design. It has kind of a play feel to it, you know. Um, so uh, also the licensing is not bulk licensing. You know, it's an individual license, so it might be if you're trying to install this in a lab, it might be a little bit difficult. But if you're using it at home or on computers that you uh, you know put individual license keys into, it'll work fine. So uh, to import our model, we can go ahead and click on local here, or we can go to the, the, um, the menu and click import. We're going to start out with the sphere. So notice it does a pretty good job. It opens up pretty quickly. Um, and then we have this uh, kind of awesome-ish wind tunnel, right? So we have our flow lines here. Notice that, um, now let's take a look at some of the options. So here we kind of have the view, the look of it. So lighting model, uh, we can change the, the color scheme actually. Uh, we can also, you know, I'm just going to leave it on standard here. We can also do light or dark. Uh, I'm going to leave it on light it seems, or dark. It seems to be a little bit easier to see. Um, so let's take a look. We can also go to simulation. So these are the buttons. The first three buttons are kind of standard. They stay the same no matter what. Then the last set of buttons here from 2D on, if I click on 2D and change it, these last set of buttons will also change. So it's it, the last set of buttons are, we can say, they're modal, right? So depending on the previous option, your additional options change. So we're just going to take a look at that. The first three buttons, though, are, are will stay the same no matter what. So we click on simulation. We can go uh, simulation that's faster or slower uh, with the resolution. I'm going to go ahead and click OK there. All right. We can also go to the wind tunnel. So let's say, I'm going to go ahead and scroll out. So we have our scroll tools over here. We're going to click on the, the magnifier, click and pull back. Okay, we're also going to use the pan tool, this hand or hand down like that. And then we're also going to go ahead and just zoom out one more time. Okay, so we can see this kind of cube that is defining our wind tunnel. And what we can do to get out of the zoom tool, we can just click it again. What we can do is we can just pull this down kind of to more where we want to see it now. Now notice there is some effect though, you know, so you don't want to make it too small. But just for demonstration purposes, we're going to go ahead and click OK. We can also change the wind speed, you know, increase the wind speed. We're going to go ahead and click OK now. All right, so um, go ahead and zoom back in here. And notice that now our, uh, our model is a little bit different. We can also do our orientation. So notice that if we click on orientation here, this is the orientation of the model. So if I go ahead and just turn these around here. Okay, notice, 
after I even said I'm going to click cancel, notice that I forgot. I actually selected my IPT here. So we're going to go import. And, you can, and this is good because you can now see the difference. Okay, so this is our IPT originally. Notice how it doesn't even it doesn't have the features that were on the thing, which is kind of odd. Notice it's essentially just a sphere. Uh, now let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and open the STL. Now notice the STL is smoother, right? It's more kind of what we wanted it to be. Also, all the features are present. Uh, so notice that that dimple right there is present. The flat side is present, right? Um, so, so the STL is is demonstrably better in this program. Um, so, anywho, so here's the STL. So we do the orientation the same. We just kind of adjust the, the sliders on the on the different um, axes. Now this is right now we're in 2D. Okay, so if I scroll up, notice that if I use the cube here, I can see we're in 2D, right? Um, so what I can do is I can go to 3D, okay, and we're going to do that in just a minute. But let's say it's 2D for a second. So we're going to go to velocity. We can do velocity or pressure. Okay, notice that we have our pressure here. Um, in velocity, we can do. Um, notice that it switches over from flow line. So velocity, we can have our drag plot open. Okay, which is great, gives us a good drag coefficient, drag force, average drag coefficient. We can also switch between flow lines and plane. Okay, in plane we have the option to do vectors instead of shaded. Okay, so right now it's showing us the the um, the uh, the force inside of the um, sorry, it's showing us the velocity. Now we can switch over and we can show the pressure instead. Pressure, pressure doesn't have as many options, so it's just a plane and shaded. Switch back over to velocity. Notice that we have a plane option with shaded. It'll give us this kind of look. Or we can have our vectors, right? We can also do our flow lines like we had before. And our flow lines can be lines, they can be tubes, they can be smoke, or they can be particles. Okay, and then we can also do these settings, okay, and the particles are a good place to, to demonstrate these settings. So we can do a speed can be increased, okay. We can also increase the, the number of particles flowing through to see like a better, you know, de demonstration of it, right. We can also increase the size of the particles, okay, to get really, really, uh, you know, let's say that this was something other than air, right. Let's say it was, we were trying to, you know, try to, you know, if we're, <laughs> maybe I don't know what this would be, but, you know, if a size percent, we wanted to see if something, the particle size was larger or something. Um, and then finally, the length. This is kind of how long it lives. This is less effective on the particles, right? So, okay, we're going to go ahead and click OK there. Notice that these settings, what looks good for one may not look good for another, right? So this is the same setting with lines. Obviously, not a great setting for lines, right? So we want to reduce the length. We want to reduce the number of them. Okay. All right, so that is the setting for 2D. Okay, now notice once again that we're looking in 2D right there, right? Okay, so this is, now we're going to switch over to 3D. Okay, that's our 3D, right? So now we're kind of looking, we're looking kind of down on it. Um, we still have our drag plot going. Um, we can we can switch over to 3D. One of the main difference on 3D is we can turn on and off surface pressure. So notice when I click that, the surface pressure shows there. Okay. Um, Oops. Okay, so we can kind of turn things around here. All right, so you can see the surface pressure there. We can also do uh, um, flow lines. We can do an ISO surface, right? So this is like, you know, we essentially see the drag going off in the distance, right? Uh, and we can change the opacity of that. Okay, so notice that we click OK. Notice that this, that essentially, the, you know, I would have, I would have thought the ball would be right here, right? But it's not. It's actually, you know, forward in space there. Okay. Okay. Let's do those flow lines again. Okay. And then we can go and do smoke. We can do uh, particles like before, and the same settings pretty much apply. Okay. All right. Okay, so that is um. Uh, okay, so that is the uh, that is um. Those are the uh, uh, settings that we can have. I think it's a really great uh, way to show drag. 
uh, you know, you can really demonstrate in a lot of different ways, which is awesome. And it gives you the, the calculations and the graphs. It's a pretty, pretty cool, pretty amazing program. So, all right, so let's go ahead and we're going to check out one other model in here because it offers a couple of challenges. So we're going to do this, this rocket 